A story, a story. An African tale retold and illustrated by Gail E. Haley. When you hear this sound, it's time for you to turn the page. Many African stories, whether or not they are about Kwaku Anansi, the Spider Man, are called spider stories. This book is about how that came to be. Spider stories tell how small, defenseless men or animals outwit others and succeed against great odds. These stories crossed the Atlantic Ocean in the cruel ships that delivered slaves to the Americas. Their descendants still tell some of these stories today. Anansi has become Anansi in the Caribbean Isles, while he survives as Aunt Nancy in the southern United States. You will find many African words in this story. If you listen carefully, you can tell what they mean by their sounds. At times, words and phrases are repeated several times. Africans repeat words to make them stronger. For example, so small, so small, so small means very, very, very small. The African storyteller begins We do not really mean. We do not really mean that what we are about to say is true. A story. A story. Let it come. Let it go. Once, O、oh、small children round my knee, there were no stories on earth to hear. All the stories belonged to Niami, the sky god. He kept them in a golden box next to his royal stool. Anansi, the Spider Man, wanted to buy the Sky God's stories, so he spun a web up to the sky. When the Sky God heard what Anansi wanted, He laughed. Twee, twee, twee! The price of my stories is that you bring me Osibo, the leopard of the terrible teeth, Mboro, the hornet who stings like fire, and Moatia, the fairy whom men never see. Anansi bowed and answered, I shall gladly pay the price. Twee, 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 chuckled the Sky God. How can a weak old man like you, so small, so small, so small, pay my price? But Anansi merely climbed down to earth. To find the things that the Sky God demanded. Anansi ran along the jungle path, Yiridi, 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 till he came to Osibo, the leopard of the terrible teeth. Oh ho, Anansi, said the leopard, you are just in time to be my lunch. Anansi replied, As for that, what will happen will happen. But first, let us play the binding binding game. The leopard, who was fond of games, asked, How is it played? With vine creepers, explained Anansi. I will bind you by your foot and foot. Then, I will untie you, and you can tie me up. Very well, growled the leopard, who planned to eat Anansi as soon as it was his turn to bind him.
So Anansi tied the leopard by his foot, by his foot, by his foot, by his foot, with the vine creeper. Then he said, Now, Osubo, you are ready to meet the sky god. And he hung the tied leopard in a tree, in the jungle. Next, Anansi cut a frond from a banana tree and filled a calabash with water. He crept through the tall grasses. So ra, so ra, so ra, till he came to the nest of Mboro, the hornets who sting like fire. Anansi held the banana leaf over his head as an umbrella. Then he poured some of the water in the calabash over his head. The rest he emptied over the hornet's nest and cried, It is raining, raining, raining. Should you not fly into my calabash so that the rain will not tatter your wings? Thank you! Thank you! hummed the hornets, and they flew into the calabash. Bum! Anansi quickly stopped the mouth of the gourd. Now, Mbora, you are ready to meet the sky god, said Anansi, and he hung the calabash full of hornets onto the tree next to the leopard. Anansi now carved a little wooden doll holding a bowl. He covered the doll from top to bottom with sticky latex gum. Then he filled the doll's bowl with pounded yams. He set the little doll at the foot of a flamboyant tree where fairies liked to dance. Anansi tied one end of a vine round the doll's head, and holding the other end in his hand, he hid behind a bush. In a little while, Moatia, the fairy whom no man sees, came dancing, dancing, dancing to the foot of the flamboyant tree. There she saw the doll holding the bowl of yams. Moatia said, Dumb baby, I am hungry. May I eat some of your yams? Anansi pulled at the vine in his hiding place so that the doll seemed to nod its head. So the fairy took the bowl from the doll and ate all the yams. Thank you, gum baby, said the fairy. But the doll did not answer. Don't you reply when I thank you, cried the angered fairy. The doll did not stir. unless you answer me, shouted the fairy. But the wooden doll remained still and silent. So the fairy slapped her crying place. Pa! Her hand stuck fast to the gum baby's sticky cheek. Let go of my hand or I'll slap you again. Pa! She slapped the doll's crying place with her other hand. Now the fairy was stuck to the gum baby with both hands, and she was furious. She pushed against the doll with her feet, and they also stuck fast. Now Anansi came out of hiding. You are ready to meet the sky god, Moatia. And he carried her to the tree where the leopard and the hornets were waiting. Anansi 
spun a web round Osibo, Mboro, and Moatia. Then he spun a web to the sky. He pulled up his captives behind him and set them down at the feet of the sky god. said Anansi, bowing low. Here is the price you ask for your stories. Osibo, the leopard of the terrible teeth. Mboro, the hornets who sting like fire. And Mmoatia, the fairy whom men never see. Niami, the sky god, called together all the nobles of his court and addressed them in a loud voice. Little Anansi, the Spider-Man, has paid me the price I ask for my stories. Sing his praise, I command you. From this day and going on forever, proclaimed the sky god. My stories belong to Anansi and shall be called Spider Stories. <laughs> Shouted all the assembled nobles. So Anansi took the golden box of stories back to Earth, to the people of his village. And when he opened the box, all the stories scattered to the corners of the world including this one. This is my story, which I have related. If it be sweet, or if it be not sweet, take some elsewhere and let some come back to me.